What's going on YouTube? My name's Mason and today we're going to be talking maintenance. This car has a hundred thousand miles on it so it's time for spark plugs. This is a 2012 Edge. It has the 3.5 liter naturally aspirated engine in it. Uh, these are going to be the same Explorer, Edge, Taurus, just about anything that they put the 3.5 in for the past seven, eight years. Uh, I'll put some more specific year and models down in the description so you can make sure that this is exactly or pretty close to being the same as what you have. So to do this job, we actually have to pull the intake. And most people, that would cut them off right there. They'd say, no, we'll just take it to the shop. But it's really not that hard. Uh, it's actually a lot easier than a lot of V8 engines where you don't have to pull the intake. The intake comes off in less than 15 minutes if you really stick with it and you're pretty decent at working with your hands. It's not, it's not difficult. So today I'm just going to try to show you guys how to do that, how to get these spark plugs in it. So there's gonna be several tools we're gonna to need to do this, and I'm just gonna link, I'm just gonna list all that down in the description so you can look and see and make sure you have everything that you need to do this job. The only two parts we're gonna need for this, really three parts, is spark plugs, of course. We're gonna need some intake gaskets. I'm actually not going to be putting intake gaskets on this one because I just had the intake off a little while back, a few weeks ago, to put a brake booster on it. So we're just gonna run with the same ones. They're probably not hurt, so I'm not gonna replace them. But you, with 100,000 miles on it, I would recommend just go ahead and replace them while you have the intake out. They're really inexpensive. The third thing is dielectric grease. I always use dielectric grease on my plug wires and coil boots. Uh, it's really good. It always helps. It's never gonna hurt you. So that'll be the only things you're gonna need to do this job. So we're gonna get right into it. I'm gonna try to do my best to show you everything that you have to do to put spark plugs in this. So to start with, we're just gonna start by pulling this air breather off. We got that mass airflow sensor unplugged. We got our two tabs off. Uh, we got our one clip that's in this pipe. And on the back, back here, we have an eight millimeter. An eight millimeter that holds this clamp on. All right, then we got one, two plugs up there, one, two plugs up there. Two tubes, that's off. Once we got that off, we'll pop these two pieces up. These two push pins. Right down here, we're gonna have one eight millimeter that holds this cover on. Some of them will be different. Some of them will or won't have that. I just wanted to show that. So now we're going to have one more push pin right there. I don't know if you can see that, but it's right there. We're going to pop it off. Pop it off so that we can slide this big, huge piece that does nothing out of the way. And we got these two front push pins right here. You'll notice there's a lot of push pins on newer vehicles, it seems like. So once we got those two out of the intake, we're gonna go ahead and unplug our purge valve. Got another video out about purge valve. If you wanna go check that out, unplug it. We're gonna unplug our throttle body right here. Let me get that out of the way. So next thing we're gonna do is take this battery out. It's not really vital to actually doing this. You can do it without it, but it does make it a little easier. There's one bolt that's up under the intake we're gonna to get to in a minute. That taking the battery out makes it a lot easier to get to. Ten millimeter on the post, eight millimeter on the ground. So one thing I will talk about that you're gonna need is a pair of hose clamp pliers like this. They're gonna make it really, really a lot easier to get this back hose, this back here. It can be done without these, but they do make it a lot easier. Got that hose on the back off there's two hoses that go right here to the back of the intake there's one in the very back that's going to be the one that's really hard to get out i would get it on video but it's pretty much impossible to see uh, you can barely see it from leaning down up under the intake the other hose i can show you it's right here so i can show you a close-up of this hose here it is i've already popped it off and the other one is back here in the back you might can just barely see it right there 
So those are the two hoses. If anything's going to deter you away from doing this job, it's gonna be that back hose. But if you stick with it, you know, give it a few minutes of your time, I think you'll find, I think you'll find that it's really, really not that difficult if you just put a little effort towards it. So you see that one eight millimeter bolt right there? That's the bolt you're gonna need an extension and a wobble for. It holds the intake down to the head. That's why we removed the battery to get easier access to that bolt. So once we've gotten that bolt out, all we have to do now is pull the rest of the intake bolts out. There's one, two, seven. There's seven, eight millimeters in this intake. You gotta get out. You go ahead and do that. Okay, so one push pin I forgot was for the purge valve. At this point, you kind of just wiggle and make sure that you got everything. The last thing we're gonna to wanna to do to get out of the way, we're gonna pull these two PCM connectors off. So here's our two connectors. What I usually do is use a little screwdriver, push my tab I need down and pull this connector over. Same thing on the other one. I roll them two wires way over here out of the way. Now, one more push pin on the other side for the purge valve line. slide this intake out. So I'm only going to show you the front three coils because it's kind of hard to get a good camera angle for the back three. The front three are identical to the back three. We have eight millimeter per coil, one connector, which can be really aggravating sometimes. Then we're going to pop the coal out, take the spark plug out. A good habit to get in <clears throat> find you something blanket whatever to lay down over these intake holes so that you don't drop anything in them uh, that would be catastrophic if you did so it's just like that now nothing can fall down in them Coal looks like. Five eight spark plug socket. So I'm gonna try switching to the GoPro, maybe get a little better camera angle. So when we put these new spark plugs in here, I'm gonna be running them down with the impact, which is not a good idea to tighten them with because you will crack the ceramic. So I'm just gonna be gently running them down until they stop and then tighten them with a regular ratchet the rest of the way. That's how I always do them. I'm real careful with them so I don't crack them, but I probably wouldn't recommend any of you trying to run them down with an impact. So we got those spark plugs installed. I'm gonna go ahead and put some electrical grease on my coals. I use Motocraft electrical grease, any kind of work. You don't need a lot of this, just a little squirt.
got all those spark plugs put in there. Coils are tight, plugged up. Everything's plugged up. You definitely don't want to leave one of these back ones unplugged. So when you put this intake on and start it, you're going to figure out you got to pull it right back off. We'll go ahead and stick this back up here. So, had some problems with it getting caught on this fiberglass back here on the firewall. It kind of be a little aggravating. We got it all set up in there. And what we want to do at this point, before we ever start running bolts down, is just really check really, really well and make sure that there's nothing trapped up under the intake. Uh, we just really wouldn't want that to happen. So, I've looked around it really well. We've got both our purge valve connector and our throttle body connector out from under it. Then we're just going to have to wiggle it and get the bolts to line up. So we got all those tightened back down. Go ahead and pop these two push pins up top right here because they keep staring at me. Then we're going to get this bolt in. This is probably the hardest part of the th whole job is getting your hand down under here to get to this. What we're gonna do is shove it back up down up under the throttle body. Find our bracket. She's right there. Start this bolt. So that bolt is started and in. Now we'll move on to the other hard part, which is this back hose. That's on. Go ahead and stick our other hose on. Right there. We can go ahead and plug back in our purge valve. Push the clip in. Plug our purge valve line, and push that clip in. Plug the throttle body up. We'll go ahead and fold our PCM connectors over. We can stick our battery back in. So with that battery in, go ahead and put this useless foam piece back up here. If you really wanted to leave this out, you could, but this isn't my vehicle, so I don't make decisions like that usually. We got our one push pin that goes in the back of that. We got our engine cover. Two big push pins that go in that. One eight millimeter it goes on that stud up front. And we got our breather. I don't know if I showed it earlier in the video, but there's the one hose that plugs in here, and on the other side we have one hose that plugs into here. So make sure you get those plugged back up, and you're gonna have a pretty big vacuum. One hose, two hose, plug our mass airflow back up, pop it in, pop filter down, tighten our hose clamp. 
and we are done. So he'll officially put spark plugs in a 3.5 liter Ford engine. Appreciate you guys watching. If you like this video, please like, please give me a like on it. Uh, if you like my content, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I try to put out content as much as I can. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments. Or if you have another vehicle you'd like to see me do, leave that down in the comments. Appreciate you guys watching.